Tonight, we're continuing to shed light on Hispanic Heritage Month, defining what the meaning of the month carries to the Hispanic and Latin community. Fabian Castahoon conducted a round table style interview with four Western New York Hispanic leaders to hear their thoughts. It's a time to celebrate not just food, music, and culture. But also we were celebrating the accomplishments of so many that came before us and build what we can enjoy today. And giving importance to ethnicity, background, and heritage. These four are key Hispanic and Latinx leaders in Western New York. Miguel Santos, Casimiro Rodriguez, Esmeralda Sierra, and Maritza Vega. You never understand how important culture is until you see the absence. To them, it's a sense of welcome to the city of Buffalo, a city that colorfully embraces each individual's bloodline. But these tenacious leaders don't credit themselves. They're crediting the pioneers and ancestors who planted roots in New York in the 1940s and 50s, allowing this crew to harvest them in real time. They came, uh, first of all, with uh, very limited English, um, uh, limited education, Okay, but one, one thing that they uh, came with was a spirit mm -hmm. of perseverance mm -hmm. and, and accomplishment. But Santos recalls facing setbacks when leaving his diverse hometown of the Bronx for Buffalo in 1980. It lit a fire under him to continue to inform. The first generation that came, family like my wife's family, who suffered miserably, miserably in Western New York, many because of skin complexion. By 19 years old, we started at the U of the um, Latino uh, Association right at the U of College because no one knew who we were and I saw the face of discrimination. That fire to inform still ignited, this time informing people about the detriments of COVID-19. Any ethnic or subgroup community is very difficult to penetrate information to with any, including ours. For our Latino community, you know, our culture is, is one of, of superstition. You know, I, I would say we have to put it in a balance of those that are vaccinated and not vaccinated, but I think that the, that the balance pretty much goes to more vaccinated than not. Add to that the language barrier for members within the Latino community. We've been able to collaborate with different um, like the FDA and they've been providing information in Spanish for us to help educate the community about the importance of protect your, protecting yourself using the adequate measures, you know, sanitizing, PPE, and also the importance of the vaccine. As these leaders continue to respond to the need within their community, they hope one project will eliminate any kind of barrier with the Hispanic Heritage Cultural Institute. It's vital because it's gonna have a resource that the Latino community does not have at this time radio and TV access so that way they could, you know, start a music group for the students, for the youth, or they could practice becoming an anchor person. We're talking 33,000 square feet, green energy, and an activities hall, to name a few. Still in the works, this $10 million project is the epitome of who Hispanics and Latinos are in the Buffalo community. But uh, also, uh, what does it mean for our community and, and where it's going to be built at uh, for the economic development of the area? But more importantly, something to leave behind for generations to come. Sometimes I wonder, who are going to be the future leaders that are going to be able to carry this baton to the next level? In Buffalo, Febin Casahoon, 7 Eyewitness News. The Hispanic Heritage Cultural Institute's progress has been delayed, of course, during the due to the pandemic. However, just this week, the state assembly upped its contribution to three point eight million dollars, putting the project at a halfway point with five million dollars. For more information, visit WKBW.com for continuing coverage on the Institute.